Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime and looks like we've got another word problem. So let's see, if a 15 foot ladder is leaned up against the wall of a house with the base of the ladder placed two and a half feet from the base of the wall, how far up the wall to the nearest tenth of a foot will the top of the ladder reach? So a lot of you guys have a really bad mistake that you do right here which is you panic instead of draw a picture. So especially in these kind of like shape problems where I have some kind of scenario going on that forms a shape, really important that you draw a picture. So I've got a house here, it's got a wall, and some grounds, and I have a ladder leaning up against the wall. Notice what shape is formed by the wall, the ladder, and the ground. That sure looks like a right triangle, a triangle with a perfect 90 degree angle. If your house leans and it's not at a 90 degree angle, we would call the carpenter, the architect, the engineer, everybody be really mad. So um, the likelihood is that your wall, just like this wall, is at a 90 degree angle, those nice perfect corners, uh, meaning that that makes this a right triangle. We know how long the ladder is, it's 15 feet. We know how far the base of the ladder is from the wall. That's two and a half feet. Now, I don't want to use fractions, so I'm going to put 2.5 feet. I hope you know that a half is the same as 0.5, and we can trade them out for each other, just like half of a dollar is 50 cents. Okay. Now, they're asking me how far up the wall to the nearest tenth of a foot will the top of the ladder reach. They want to know this height. So what I have here is I have a right triangle, I know two side lengths of it and I'm looking for the third. There is a relationship that gives the, uh, or there is a formula that gives the relationship between three sides of a right triangle. That is known as the Pythagorean theorem. It is on your formula sheet so you do not need to memorize it, but you should take note on your formula sheet, your GED formula sheet, what this is for. This is for finding a missing side of a right triangle. So if you have two sides and you want to find the third, this will do it for you. It is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And all you need to know about it is that the c is the hypotenuse, the side directly across from the right angle. Uh, the other two um, sides, the ones that uh, enclose the right angle, are known as the legs and they even make a beautiful L to help you remember that. Those are A and B, and it doesn't matter which one's which, they're interchangeable, okay? So as it turns out here, I do not know my A. My A is the thing I'm looking for. See, I don't know this missing side here, and so I will call A, A, but I do know my B, my other leg is 2.5, so I'll plug 2.5 in for B, and my formula says to square that, so I'll square that. And my formula has an equal sign, so I'll keep an equal sign. I also know my C, my hypotenuse. My C, my side directly across from the right angle, is 15, so I'll plug a 15 in there, and I'll square it. So this is the algebraic formula here that I'm working with. Now, do remember in math class that you should do any simplifying, any forwards math, before you start solving, before you start moving backwards. And I do see some couple of things I know how to simplify. I know how to square numbers, so that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to square uh, 2.5 and 15. So I won't touch a squared, because I don't know how to square a, because I don't know what a is. But I will square 2.5, So and you can do this in your GED calculator, 2.5 and then the x squared button, or 2.5 times 2.5, and you'll get 6.25. And I can square the other side too, the 15 squared will give me 225. Okay, so now I've finished my simplifying. There's no more simplifying, no more forwards math to do. So it's time to start solving, time to start moving things away from the letter so the letter can be alone. First, I'll move any terms that are adding or subtracting. So I'm gonna subtract 6.25 from both sides. And I'm left with a squared is equal to, and now I really do need a calculator. Um, I suppose I could do the subtraction by myself, but the next step would be rough. So um, you should have your TI-30XS calculator, um, except for apparently I left mine at home, so I'm using the internet. But I highly recommend that you use the TI because you need to get used to it. So 225 minus 625 gives me 218.75.
Now, this problem is almost solved. The letter is almost by itself, but notice A isn't quite alone. It still has this little square hanging out, this little floating two. In order to get rid of a square, you have to do the opposite of square. The opposite of square is square root. So what you need to do to get rid of a square is take the square root of it. Now the rule of solving is you can do whatever you want to an equation um, as long as you do it to both sides. So I'm going to take the square root of the other side as well. On the left hand side square and square root cancel leaving A alone just like I want it. And on the right hand side there is the math to do and this is really easy to do in a TI uh, 30 excess. This is what I'm going to have you do. To get the square root symbol you press second and then you press the x squared button and you're going to notice why because there's a little square root over the x squared button. And then you can type in your number or you could be super lazy like me and just press second and the negative button because right above the negative button is the letters A and S for answer. So you can take the square root of the answer. So I'll do that as well. I'll take the square root of that answer. And I'm going to get a nice, ugly, disgusting, long run on decimals. So 14 point yada, 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 yada. And as my um, students are fond of reminding me, I often forget to follow my own rounding directions. Don't be uh, foolish like me and forget to follow rounding directions because um, you could get a problem that you got totally right wrong just because you didn't round according to directions. So let's take a look here if I see any rounding language. It says, how far up the wall to the nearest tenth of a foot? There's my rounding language. Uh, will the top of the ladder reach? So tenth of a foot, the tenth is the first decimal place. So that means I want my number to stop after the first decimal place, so I'll cut it off right there. I'll consider the next number, the one I'm about to throw out, and ask myself if it's five or higher. In, it is indeed, and so its last act before I throw it out will be to bump up its buddy. That seven will go up to an eight, so it's about 14.8 feet that that ladder is hitting up the wall. Great. A tricky little question, and um, about as challenging as geometry gets on the GED. If you have any questions about this or any other math topic or GED topic, drop it in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer it.